Hey guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is part one of lesson 6.1. We're going to use the law of sines to solve oblique triangles that look like angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. And we're gonna use the law of sines to solve oblique triangles that look like side, side, angle. So an oblique triangle is just a triangle that doesn't have any right angles in it. So it could be an acute triangle like is pictured on the left, or it could be an obtuse triangle like we have pictured on the right hand side. So here's what our law of sines is gonna look like. If we've got a triangle ABC that has side lengths of little a, little b, and little c, then there's two different forms of the law of sines that we can use. We've got this one over here on the left where it's got the sides on the top and the angles on the bottom, or I guess the sine of the angles on the bottom. So a over the sine of a, b over the sine of b, c over the sine of c. And then on the right hand side for our other form, it's basically just the same thing except our fractions are flipped over. So we've got the sine of A over A, sine of B over B, and sine of C over C. I like to use this left hand side when we're trying to find one of the sides of our triangles because it has those sides on top. So it just makes the math a little bit easier. And then as far as finding the angles, I like to use this form on the right hand side because we've got some of that angle information on top of our fractions. One thing to notice about our triangle, since we've got big A here as this angle, directly across from it is the side little a. Same thing with the B, we've got big B as the angle, little b as a side, big C as the angle, little c as the side. So let's say we were taking a look at this triangle. We've got this triangle ABC, we're given three pieces of information. What we wanna do is go through and find all the missing things. Now I'm gonna start with the easy stuff. I see that we're given two angles inside of this triangle, so we're gonna go ahead and find this third angle right away. Remember, the angles inside of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So if we take a look at what we've already got, those things add up to 131 degrees. So angle A down here has to be 49 degrees. Now if we start figuring out some of those sides, maybe let's find side A first. So if we use our law of sines, I'm gonna go with A over the sine of angle A, which we just said was 49 degrees, equals, now for the other piece of the fraction, we wanna look for something where we have both pieces of information. And what I'm looking at is right here, we've got side B, we also know how big angle B is, so I'm gonna use the information about B on the right-hand side of this fraction. So we're gonna go with side B, which is 27.4, over the sine of angle B, which is 28.7. And now we're gonna to look to simplify some of this stuff down. So if we type in the sine of 49 degrees in our calculator, I'm gonna go four decimal places. We're gonna get 0.7547. On the right-hand side, we should be able to type this entire fraction into our calculator. And again, I'm gonna go four decimals on that. So we get 57.0567. Now our whole goal is to get this A piece all by itself. So what I'm gonna do is take this 0.7547 and multiply it over to the other side, so 0.7547. Those things cancel out, and now we should just be able to type this stuff into our calculator, the 57.0567 times that other decimal, and we should get side A to be about 43.06, and I guess we're measuring this in feet. The last piece we need to find is side C, so I'm gonna go C over the sine of angle C, which we said earlier was 102.3. On the right hand side, I'm gonna use this same information about B that we used earlier. And remember, we typed that into the calculator once already. And when we did that, we got 57.0567. So now all we need to do is on the bottom of this fraction, we need to type in the sine of 102.3 on our calculator. And I'm gonna go four decimals again, and we get about 0 0.9770 equals that 57.0567. And again, I'm gonna take this decimal and multiply it over to the right-hand side. And when we do that, we get side C to be about 55.74 feet again. In this example, we've got triangle ABC again. Angle A is gonna be 30 degrees, angle B is 45 degrees, and we've got side A as 32 feet. Just like the last one, we've got two angles inside of our triangle, so it should be really easy for us to find the missing third angle because those things have to add up to 180 degrees. So angle C has to be 105 degrees. And now we can find missing sides of our triangle. So let's start with side B, we're missing that one. So let's go B over the sine of angle B, which is 45 degrees, equals, looks like we have both pieces of information about A. So I'm gonna go with side A, which is 32, over the sine of angle A, which is 30 degrees. 
If we type the right-hand side into our calculator, we get 64. On the left-hand side, the sine of 45 degrees is about 0.7071. And again, we're going to take this decimal and multiply it over to the right-hand side. And for side B, we get about 45.25 feet. For side C, we're going to go with C over the sine of 105 equals, I'm going to use this same A information that we talked about before, typing that into our calculator, we got 64. If we do the sine of 105 on our calculator to four decimals, we get 0.9659 equals that 64. And again, multiply that decimal to the right-hand side. We get side C to be about 61.82. Next example we've got is a little bit of an application problem. So we've got a tree growing in a windy area and because of those prevailing winds, the tree grew so that it was leaning six degrees past the vertical. So talking about this angle down here, it's six degrees past vertical. Well, vertical would be 90 degrees, so that's gonna make this a 96 degree angle. So we're standing at a point 30 meters from the tree going across the bottom. So I'm gonna draw this out. We've got 30 meters down here. We're looking up to the top of the tree and that angle of elevation in there is 22.5 degrees. And what we wanna do is we wanna figure out the height of our tree. We've got almost everything we need. Uh, since we've got this side on the bottom, we're actually gonna need the angle on the top right hand corner. But that should be pretty easy since the angles inside of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. That makes this angle up here 61.5 degrees. Now if we look at setting up some law of sines to help us, we want this h value. So we're gonna go h over the sine of our 22.5 degree angle equals this side that we were given 30 over the sine of its opposite angle, which we just said was 61.5. If we type the right hand side into our calculator, going to four decimals, we've got 34.1368. On the left hand side, the sine of 22.5, is 0.3827, and let's multiply that decimal over to the right-hand side. We get the height of our tree to be about 13.06 meters. Next thing we're looking at is something called the ambiguous case when we're dealing with the law of sines, and the way we can tell that a triangle is going to be one of these ambiguous cases is based on the information we're given. If we're given a side-side angle picture to look at, or if we drew out the picture and we ended up with this side-side angle, that's how we're going to identify this ambiguous case. And there's three different things that can happen with this ambiguous case. There could be no triangle that exists given the information. There could be one triangle or there could be two triangles that might exist. Now along the way, we're gonna have to figure out what the height of our triangle is to help us know which one of these three cases we're looking at. So in order to find the height of our triangle, we're gonna use this H equals B times the sine of A formula. So first thing we're looking at is the case where no triangles exist. So there's really two different pictures we could be looking at, and it all depends on what kind of information we're given. If A is acute and the length of A is shorter than the height of the triangle, it would be this first picture. If A is obtuse and side A is shorter than or equal to side B, then it would be the second picture. So based on the information we've got, we've got A being 15, B is 25, and angle A is 85. If we went ahead and found the height of this triangle, we're gonna go with B times the sine of angle A. When we do that, we get about 24.09 as the height of our triangle. So if we were to draw out that picture, it would look something like this first one. And basically what's happening is this side A in our picture isn't long enough to complete that third angle of our triangle. So we're gonna use our law of science to show that this triangle doesn't exist. So based on the information we've got, we're gonna set up this form of our law of sines. So we're gonna go with the sine of B over side B is 25 equals the sine of our 85 degree angle over side A, which is 15. Typing the right-hand side into our calculator, we get 0 0.0664. On the left-hand side, we've got the sine of B over 25. So we're gonna multiply that 25 over to the right-hand side. So we get the sine of B equals 1.66 approximately. Now if we want B to be all by itself, what we're gonna have to do is use an inverse sine to get B all by itself. So we're looking at the inverse sine of 1.66. And if we tried to type this into our calculator, it would tell us that there's an error. 1.66 is not in the domain of the inverse sine. This one does not exist. 
Next one we're looking at is going to be case 2, where we've got one triangle that exists. If we look at the information we've got, side A is 22 inches, side B is 12 inches, and angle A is 42 degrees. If we were to draw this one out, we would be looking at this middle picture because angle A is acute and side A is bigger than side B. Since there's one triangle that exists, this is going to be our normal law of sine setup. I think the first thing I would find would be angle B. Since we've got both pieces for A, we've got the side for B. Let's go with the sine of angle B over 12 equals the sine of angle A, which is 42 degrees, over side A, which is 22. Typing the right-hand side into our calculator, we get 0 0.0304. Left-hand side, we've still got the sine of B over 12. So I'm going to take this 12 and multiply it over to the right-hand side. And when we do that, we get the sine of B equals 0.3648. Now to rewrite this one, we're going to use an inverse sine of that decimal, 0.3648, and we'll type that into our calculator. And we get angle B to be about 21.4 degrees. Now since we've got two of the angles inside of our triangle, it should be really easy for us to find the third angle. So angle C ends up being 116.6 degrees. Now to find side C, we're going to go with C over the sine of angle C, which we just said was 116.6 equals, now it really doesn't matter what we use on the right hand side, we can use our information about A or our information about B. I'm going to use the information about A, so I'm going to go with 22 over the sine of 42. Right hand side, if we type that into our calculator, it's 32.8785. Left hand side, the sine of 116.6 is about 0.8942. If we multiply that decimal over to the right hand side, we should get about 29.4 for side C. Last case we've got is where there are two triangles that exist. So the information we've got, A is going to be 12 meters, B is 31 meters, and angle A is 20.5 degrees. If we find the height of our triangle, we would go with 31 times the sine of 20.5. And when we do that, we get about 10.86. So looking at what's going on, that side A is between the length of H and the length of B. And also A is an acute angle. So that's how we know that there's going to be two triangles. To start this one off, we're going to deal with it just like any other law of sines problem. So we've got side A and angle A. We've got side B, so let's find angle B. So we're going to go with the sine of B over 31 equals the sine of angle A, 20.5 over 12. Typing the right-hand side into our calculator, we get 0 0.0292. Left-hand side, we've got the sine of B over 31. Multiplying the 31 over to the right-hand side, we get the sine of B equals 0 0.9052. And then rewriting this one with an inverse, we've got the inverse sine of that decimal, 0.9052. Typing that into our calculator, we end up with an angle of about 64.9 degrees. Since we've got two angles, we should be able to find the third angle. So angle C is going to end up being 94.6 degrees. Now let's go ahead and find side C. So we're going to go C over the sine of 94.6 equals, again on this side we can use either A information or B information. I'm going to use A information, so 12 over sine of 20.5. Right hand side is 34.2654. Left hand side we've got C over 0.9968. Multiplying that decimal over to the right hand side, we get about 34.16 as side C. Now that's for our first triangle. We're going to do a little bit more to find the second triangle. Now for the first triangle, we said that angle B was about 64.9 degrees. Well, on this one, we're going to assume that B is a little bit bigger. And in order to figure out how big that angle B is, is we're going to take 180 minus that 64.9 degrees. So for this one, angle B is going to be 115.1 degrees. So let me write that down here. Angle B is 115.1. Since we've got two angles with A and this new angle B, we'll also need a new angle C. And when we do that, we end up with 44.4 degrees. Since we've got a new angle C, we're also going to have to find a new side C. So we're going to go C over the sine of 44.4 
equals 12 over the sine of 20.5. We did this right-hand side already on the last page. That was 34.2654. Left-hand side, we've got C over 0.6997. And if we multiply that decimal over to the right-hand side, we get C to be about 23.98. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.